Now the second problem is crown rot and I will share with you on the screen and also in the description of this video um, a video posted by Just Add Ice Orchids in which they show how to water mini phalaenopsis and if you watch that video which is let's say educational, you will notice that somebody places the ice cubes on top of orchids in the crowns, touching the leaves, touching the joints where the leaves meet the stem and so on, practically leaving water uh, accumulate in the crown. Now let's see what the Orchid Society says about this. You can find articles about this on the AOS as well, but I will uh, take an expert from another Orchid Society right now that deals with problems in culture with Phalaenopsis orchids and deals, first of all, with crown rot. And they do specify that if water is allowed to stand in the crown of a plant, naturally occurring bacteria will proliferate. What they are trying to say that water left standing in crowns for too long can promote crown rot. Now, crown rot, if you research it again, is a disease which can be fatal for Phalaenopsis orchids. Us collectors do agree with this statement because if you've watched our videos, I think each and every one of us has a story with rotting of some sorts, whether it's crown rot or stem rot or something of the sorts. And the general consent in the forums and with other broadcasting platforms is that indeed water left standing in the crown can promote crown rot, can lead to an orchid's death and so on. The more you will research actually the subject, the more information you will get because I think this is the number one killer of orchids, especially Phalaenopsis orchids, crown rot. So if you are not acquainted with the term, do give it a Google search or search in my videos or any other videos, you will learn what it is and you will see how easy it is to actually get crown rot and how much you should avoid it. So the second, let's say, advice that Just at Ice gives me is really, really conflicting with what the Orchid Society says and it also conflicts with what collectors say as well. So again, as a normal home grower, I am a bit confused whether I should believe this advice or not, since other people are really, really against it. And I do have solid evidence. I have pictures, I have videos, I have all sorts of information that shows me how crown rot is, what causes it, gives me the, uh, let's say, scientific reason with the bacteria accumulating and so on. So that would be another question mark in my mind whether Just That Ice really gives me a good advice or not. It's up to me to decide if this is good advice or not. Okay, the third advice that Just That Ice gives me is on their website and I've talked about this before, but I will reiterate it. I'm not sure if that's a word. Uh, they say that Phalaenopsis orchids have a dormancy. So practically when your orchid will look pretty much dead rather than alive, you will have limpy leaves, leathery leaves. Your orchid will generally not be perky and so on. Uh, they say you shouldn't worry because it is a dormancy period and at some point the orchid will wake up and uh, bounce back to life somehow miraculously without you actually doing anything uh, major in your care. And I'll direct you here to another excerpt uh, or an article from the American Orchid Society uh, that deals with loss of roots and dehydration due to overwatering in the sense that providing water too often can actually kill off the root system. And if we read the article, we can see that the symptoms for dehydration are wrinkled and leathery and limpy leaves uh, with orchids in general. And they say that a main issue of this is a lack of moisture within the plant. This can be due to underwatering, but most of the times it is due to root loss. It's pretty logical. If an orchid loses its roots, it will not get hydrated. It will not be able to absorb water. Thus, the leaves will become limpy, will become dehydrated and so on. In any case, limpy leaves as a general consent means a loss of roots. And as I said, if a Phalaenopsis orchid cannot hydrate itself, it's not only valid for Phalaenopsis, but we'll just talk about them. It will show it by having leathery, limpy leaves and so on. Now, collectors agree with this. And if you search on Google, on my videos, on other people's videos, on forums and so on, you will see that the cases of limpy leaves and so on are due to root loss. And the cause of root loss may vary due to inappropriate media or too much water or too frequent watering that caused root loss and so on. It's a delicate subject, but the main agreement is root loss. 
Nowhere does it say that it is a sign of dormancy for Phalaenopsis orchids. I'll also direct you to another article from the American Orchid Society. It is a Phalaenopsis for Beginners article. Nowhere does it say that Phalaenopsis orchids have a dormancy period. And if you actually try to find articles, you will never find something like strict dormancy for Phalaenopsis orchids. They might have like a sort of a resting period, although it's just an illusion because they do grow roots and so on. If you take into consideration other, uh, let's say, orchids which really do have dormancy periods, you will see that Phalaenopsis don't have dormancy periods. No article suggests that you change something dramatically in your care. They pretty much say to keep your orchid watered all through the year and so on. So no dormancy for Phalaenopsis orchids. And if you further research the limpy leaves and all of that, you will probably discover uh, all the articles suggesting that your orchid lost roots. Indeed, if you have one of these cases, you can pluck out your orchid and check the root system and most probably you will discover that that your orchid does not really have too, too many roots. So taking everything into account, the advice that Just at Ice orchids gave me conflicts with a lot, a lot of articles, many of them from the orchid societies, from growers, from collectors, from forums and so on. So again, I'm confused as a normal home grower and I'm not sure who to believe because there are too many sources that conflict with this information. So in my mind, again, I might think that just that ice orchids just gave me a um, pretty wrong advice here. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna talk about is actually cold damage. And I will direct you to an article from the Oregon Orchid Society, which actually talks about this. Now, like any of us, they don't say, no, don't do this. They just say, okay, let us think things through. And they actually give you some reasons why the statements that just that eyes gives are not necessarily accurate and I think you should read it. In any case, they do issue the warning that freezing water is not necessarily good for Phalaenopsis orchids because they don't grow in areas which encounter freezing conditions. I'll also direct you to an article by the American Orchid Society that deals with cold damage. This is cold damage in general caused by cold temperatures or cold water. They all have some symptoms. And in this article, you will see what cold environments or freezing cold environments can actually do to orchids. Now, us YouTubers, collectors, however you want to call us, uh, I think we all have an experience with cold damage. In the winter time, most probably all of us had a leaf standing on the window and actually getting damaged by the cold. We all had some roots that were damaged by cold water and so on. So if you check the forums and some of our videos and so on, you will probably find something about coal damage. And basically the general consent is that freezing cold water, freezing cold temperatures do harm to our orchids. So not only the roots will get affected by freezing cold water, but also the leaves. So returning to that video in which just that ice told me to put the ice on the leaves. Again, this is conflicting information. I don't know what to believe. On one hand, the experts tell me that Phalaenopsis orchids do not encounter freezing conditions in their natural habitat. And on the other hand, this company encourages me to uh, touch any portion of the orchid with ice and everything should be fine. So again, as a normal grower, I'm conflicted. I don't know what advice to take here. Okay, so hopefully now you can understand why the vast majority of us are pretty much against using guys. Also, the orchid experts and uh, let's say the people who grow orchids for a lot of years stay away from mice. I don't think you'll ever see a nursery or uh, like a very reputable grower watering with ice and, and so on. There are a few techniques that remained along the years simply because they work make sense and uh, so on. But obviously, if you are one of those persons who absolutely wants to water with ice, truly go ahead because I can understand that through mistakes you can learn better. You know how bad experiences stay in your mind more than good experience and yeah, this is how we all learned. Of course, it's up to us to decide if what we hear is logical and correct or not. 
And also, if you know me, you know that I encourage you to visit multiple sources, see what they say and wait the advice. But do make a difference with the sources. In my recent discussion or comments with my viewer, he was quoting me some articles that had some major, major mistakes in them that I actually pointed out. Mistakes like Phalaenopsis orchids actually bloom after their dormancy. So if you think about it, presumably Phalaenopsis orchids have a dormancy, they go limp, they don't grow anything. And at some point they wake up and produce a flower spike without actually growing anything. So think of it like that. Think of the illogical chain of events that that article tries to explain to me. There is also one article that specifies that if you cut the flower spikes, you will get a secondary branch. It does not mention the possibility that you will actually not get a secondary branch. It does not mention the possibility that the flower spikes can remain green but never bloom again, but the orchid will produce new spikes. And I think Sam here on YouTube has the most experience with Phalaenopsis. She's seen them all and I actually had a lot of Phalaenopsis at some point. You might know them from my video. I've seen a lot of cases and I know all the possibilities that a flower spike can rebloom or not rebloom or what the orchid can do. So when I read something like that in that article, I find it incomplete, I find it very superficial. I truly feel that the person who wrote the article does not have enough experience with orchids. And I know this is pretty hard for a uh, beginner with orchids. You have no idea what these orchids are about and you absolutely trust what an article says and at some point you will wake up that you actually cut the flower spikes and nothing happened. So something went wrong and you'll start to believe that your orchid is dying and so on. So practically you can see the chain of events and these are questions that I actually get asked a lot. So that's the deal. You kind of have to wait a bit. Who says these things? What reasons do they give? And hopefully this terribly, terribly long video will actually do somebody good. So excuse the length, but I really needed to get this out of my system. And uh, really it's up to you to take this decision. And why not? Let me know in the comment below what you guys think about this, your experiences, if you have any with ice and so on. So yeah, just let me know your opinions. Alrighty, thank you for watching this video. If you bared with me till the end, if you liked it and you found it useful, give it a like and also share it with some of your orchid friends, beginners or whatever. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from me, subscribe to my channel. I post on a daily basis. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to my website, orchidnature.com, and there I'm trying to upload care sheets, identification sheets, and also participate in the forums. And if you click on the right side of your screen, you'll actually see my twist on how to care for Phalaenopsis orchids. And you'll practically see there my ex-collection of Phalaenopsis orchids, because I kind of got bored of them at some point. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!